Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. We would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us on Patreon. Please check the link in the description for more details. Many thanks to our current patrons for their continued support and making this video possible. My name is Sava, and today we are investigating a simple yet very powerful trick that can be used to apply multiple regression to fundamental analysis. As you might remember, our very first video on the channel was dedicated to applying valuation multiples, that is, price to book and price to earnings ratios, to valuing stocks, determining whether they are overvalued or undervalued, and whether there is a buying or selling signal in the data for this particular stock, if you believe fundamental analysis tools heavily applied by practitioners in the investment industry. Today, we are looking at a slightly more generalized approach to fundamental analysis, because, as you might remember, price to book and price to earnings multiples can be only used to value one stock at a time, and it can be inapplicable to stocks with negative earnings per share or negative book value of equity. And in the current times, when some companies are in financial distress and might report negative earnings, suffering some losses due to the current recession, or suffering some liquidity issues and having negative book values of equity, uh, this approach is all the more relevant. So, first of all, to apply this tool, you have to get a set of roughly comparable companies. Most likely, you will get a set of companies from the same market and from the same industry. And that's exactly what I've done over here, extracting data on 67 companies from the S&P 500 in the industrials sector. And uh, fundamental analysis using multiples is mostly applicable to well-established companies from tangible industries, such as industrials, materials, consumer discretionary, and so on and so forth. They might be not as applicable to growth companies in uh, high-tech industries, in technology, or in pharmaceuticals industries, and so on and so forth. But for industrials and materials, this approach works just fine most of the time. And as for the data, we just need four data inputs for each of our companies. We need their current stock price, and three value drivers. Those three value drivers are suspected sources of corporate value that we can then translate into respective multiples. Those are earnings per share, book value per share, that lead you to calculate price to earnings and price to book in the traditional approach. And as the third value driver, I've selected sales per share. That can be used to calculate another multiple that is relatively famous, but not as widely applicable as price to book and price to earnings, price to sales. And, uh, well, we have got this data on prices and three value drivers, earnings per share, book value per share, and sales per share, for all 67 companies. So what you might be tempted to do straight away is to apply multiple regression, regressing prices onto three value drivers, and determining, first of all, which of the value drivers are the most important, that uh, are significant drivers of corporate value, and uh, whether some stocks are overvalued or undervalued, based on this simple multiple regression model. But, as is stated in the research on the subject, and most uh, notably in the 2002 paper on valuation multiples by Leo et al., is that such a regression would suffer from heteroscedasticity. Why is that the case? Well, because stock prices of companies span multiple orders of magnitude. There are stocks that have very low prices, such as this company, General Electric, that is trading at $9.5 per share, and stocks that are valued at very high stock prices. And it's not necessarily because of high market caps, it might be because of the number of shares outstanding. This is just a numerare. You might have a very uh, large company with um, small stock price, or a very small company with a very large stock price. It all depends on the number of shares currently traded on the market. So the likelihood of a stock like General Electric to be over or undervalued by $1 is much less than the likelihood of a um, share that is uh, currently valued and currently being traded in the hundreds, like Lockheed Martin, to be uh, over or undervalued by $1. Uh, most likely, over and undervaluation is relative in percentage of the current share price. So what is generally done in such uh, a regression approach to avoid heteroscedasticity and to make a more plausible assumption about how stocks can be over or undervalued by the market, uh, given 
uh, the fundamental analysis we are undertaking is just to divide all of the uh, regresses and the dependent variable, that is the price, by the price. So we can treat all of the over or under valuations as percentages of the stock price. And we can easily deduce from there which stocks are more over or undervalued than the others. And we can also avoid heteroscedasticity, so making our estimates efficient and more reliable. So here we need to divide each and every of our variables by the stock price. And here there is another tweak that we need to keep in mind. When we do multiple regression, so we regress our stock price on three value drivers, we also have the constant somewhere there. But uh, in this type of a regression, where we divide everything to avoid heteroscedasticity, we would also need to divide the constant, so coded in the multiple regression as an array of ones, onto the stock price. And uh, if we were to apply Linus to the initial data input, we would just select that we need the constant. But given the fact that we divide everything by the price, we cannot just get it from the Linus template. We need to code the constant manually. And that's what we're going to do just now. Over here, first of all, we need to divide the price by the price. And we'll be left with 1 or 100%. And that will come in handy just a little bit later on. Then we need to code the constant, which would be in that type of an adjusted regression, uh, 1 over the stock price. And we bottom back it all the way down for all 67 companies in our sample. And then we need to adjust all of the three value drivers, earnings per share, book value per share, and sales per share, by the current stock price. So we divide this by the price, and here we can lock the column, so we don't have to type it in more than we should, drag it across all three value drivers, and bottom back it all the way down for all 67 sample companies. And then we can proceed with the multiple regression. Actually, this adjusted approach also gives you some insight into why in the early academic research on the topic of uh, value drivers, fundamental analysis, and also stock market anomalies driven by value and growth companies and also small and big companies, you have got the reverse multiples, reverse to what are usually applied in the industry. You generally encounter not price to earnings, but earnings yield or earnings to price multiple and not uh, price to book ratio, but book to market ratio or book to price ratio. The whole reason why that's the case is that these multiples arise from such multiple regression adjusted for the current stock price. And in that case, treating these multiples as the reverse of what are commonly used in the industry is all the more natural because you can regress the stream of ones which is a price adjusted by the price, onto the adjusted constant and those three reverse valuation multiples to get an idea of what actually drives corporate value in terms of fundamental analysis. So we can proceed with applying the multiple regression. And here we need to select a 4x5 array because we have got a constant and three uh, independent variables. And five rows is just the regular Linus template. And apply the Linus function regressing the stream of ones, which is prices divided by prices, onto our adjusted constant and three value drivers. Then we need to select that we don't want the constant because we have manually encoded it, so input, input in zero over here. And we do need the additional statistics to get the R squared, the number of the degrees of freedom, and most importantly, the standard errors of the coefficients. So we input one over here and enforce this matrix formula using shift control enter as you should always do with matrix formulas. So we're enforcing it using shift control enter and we immediately get the respective coefficients for the three value drivers of interest and the constant, the respective standard errors and the R squared. And we can see that the R squared is relatively high. Uh, the fundamental value drivers that we have selected, uh, earnings per share, book value per share and sales per share account for 74% of the variability in terms of uh, prices and the deviations from the equilibrium price. So we can see that uh, fundamental analysis works quite well, even from the value of R squared for industrials from the S&P 500. And that's what you would expect. But which of the three value drivers are the most pronounced in terms of shaping corporate value? Well, we can see it from the coefficients here and from the standard errors here. But to be uh, absolutely sure, we need to apply t-tests to those coefficients to determine which are statistically significant. Again, uh, these coefficients are all positive, and that's what you would expect in uh, normal circumstances, under normal circumstances, 
because uh, sales, book value, and earnings, higher values of those, should cause a higher value of the company. But let's see which are the most significant in terms of explaining differences in stock prices. So we need to calculate t-stats by dividing coefficients by the respective standard errors, dragging it across, and then applying the two-tailed t-distribution onto the absolute values of t-stats with 63 degrees of freedom, as we have got 67 observations, 67 companies, uh, industrials from S&P 500, and we have imposed four restrictions onto this set of variables uh, by including a constant and three explanatory variables. And we can drag this formula for the p-value across and see that the most significant by a large margin value driver is book value per share. And uh, sales and earnings are less significant in explaining corporate value and current stock prices, with earnings being marginally insignificant, this p-value being slightly above 10%, and sales being less significant still. Uh, the constant here is insignificant, meaning that very few additional fluctuations in the stock prices can be captured by adding up extra factors into the model. So we have, in general, properly specified our multiple regression with the three value drivers. So what can we do now is we can calculate the expected value of the stock price based on the coefficients we have estimated and the values of the valuation multiples, the reverse valuation multiples here, for each and every of our companies. And then it would lead us to deduce what is the degree of under or overvaluation of a particular company. So here we can just multiply the respective data onto the coefficients, lock in the rows and coefficients all the way through. So multiply the constant, the adjusted constant one divided by price onto this coefficient, adding up earnings yield times the respective coefficient book to market times the respective coefficient and sales per share sales to price times the respective coefficient and lock in the rows in all coefficients, we can enforce this formula and bottom right click it all the way down for all 67 companies. And here we can see the estimate of which proportion of the current market price is backed up by the fundamental value of the company given three value drivers we investigated. As we can see here, the very first company in our sample, which is United Parcel Service, is only backed up 33.98% by its fundamental value. So it means that the uh, stock is now uh, very much overvalued based on these three in reverse valuation multiples. There are some stocks that are undervalued though. For example, this stock, which is Radiant Technologies, is backed up by 164% by its fundamental value, meaning that this stock is massively undervalued by the market, judging by those three multiples. And we can see roughly the reason for that. For example, here we can see that those uh, three multiples are quite low, if we compare them to these multiples for Raytheon, and that's why this valuation is much higher than this valuation. And for the company that is valued at a negative uh, percentage, and uh, this again uh, highlights that you can apply valuation multiples to companies with negative earnings per share or book value per share in terms of multiple regression, which was unapplicable in terms of uh, the regular valuation multiples approach, we can see that for Boeing, uh, even though its earnings per share and book to market are negative because of the current situation and how uh, hard the overall industry was hit by the crisis, well, even though this value is negative, we can still keep this company in the sample and apply the same procedures. So now what we can do is we can estimate the fair values of each and every of the company's stocks by just multiplying their stock price onto the proportion of their current stock price that is backed up by fundamental value that we have just obtained from the regression. And we can enforce this formula and apply it for every single stock and see what the fundamental values are. So for example, for United Parcel Service that we have just investigated, the fair value is $56.36 per share and the stock price is $165.88. And that means that this model gives you an insight into this company being overvalued. And here we can uh, exploit those differences between fair values and stock prices to produce uh, trading signals based on our fundamental analysis. Because if the fair value is above the stock price, you should probably 
buy such an undervalued stock, and if it's the reverse, then you should sell the stock. So we can see that the stocks that have a fair value that's excess of their uh, current market price, such as Raytheon, General Electric, General Dynamics, and so on and so forth over the whole sample, we can justify buying those based on our fundamental analysis. Um, and if the fair value is lower than their stock prices, we should probably sell them or not consider buying them. And that's all there is for fundamental analysis using value drivers and multiple regression. Please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions on further videos on business, economics, or finance you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Again, many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible. Thank you all very much and stay tuned.